for every project I've, I think I've ever done, every product I've started, lots of people tell me it'll never work. If it's possible, what's the point? Like, why don't we try to make the things that are seemingly impossible possible? I grew up on a farm in rural Connecticut. As a child, I really loved two subjects the best, and they were math and art. I was, I think, doing calculus by eighth grade and just independently. It wasn't really celebrated in my family or at school. So the reward was the math itself. I made my first hologram as a freshman in college, and I just completely fell in love with it. There's a really hard technical puzzle you have to solve with really complex math, cutting edge lasers, optics on a table that, that floats in nitrogen air and you can't even breathe because you might wreck the, you know, the, the vibration patterns. And you see this seemingly magical thing appear. I just thought, wow, it's the future. The first public talk I gave, a guy stood up and, and just reamed into my presentation and said it would never work. And it was really hard being young and being the first time on stage to hear that. But my advisor at the time said, when somebody says that to you, it really means two things. The first thing is they're a little bit jealous. And the next thing is keep going because you're on the right track. I was in a wheelchair. I couldn't move half my face. I dropped out of my PhD program. I could no longer subtract. And then one of the professors from the med school sprung for the cost of an MRI. They found the brain tumor. I never actually thought I would live a long life. And so I felt that I wanted to live while I was alive and do stuff to solve the big problems of the world. I wanted to start a low-cost laptop effort for children in the developing world who lack steady, ready access to electricity. Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, Michael Dell, um, Craig Barrett, the then CEO of Intel, all said it would never work. I hand-soldered a prototype, and Kofi Annan, the then head of the United Nations, wanted to unveil it at this world forum. And then every head of state in the world wanted access to the laptops. This little startup had a billion dollars of revenue and became the fastest growing consumer electronic category ever recorded, transformed the lives of children in the developing world, and it's still the lowest power laptop ever made. When I had my brain tumor, I was in these really expensive MRI machines. And so I couldn't help but think, how do we up the resolution and make this into something small? What we figured out how to do is be able to focus light very precisely in your body using the next generation liquid crystal displays and camera chips I'm designing that can be put into a ski cap or a bandage where LCDs and camera chips line the inside of the ski cap or the bandage. This can help lots of people with brain disease like Stephen Hawking or, or the two billion people that live with brain disease. On some level, we're all kind of like Stephen Hawking. What if you could dump the image out? What if you could dump the music out? What if you could dump the pure raw emotion out? Or your dreams? Or share your minds with people that you're willing to share with and then you get into all kinds of legal and ethical issues. But I think it's inevitable and we have to face those because this changes everything, everything. It's okay to get the criticism. I hear that for every project, every product I've ever done, and 
Literally within two to three years, I ship the very thing they think is impossible. When you sort of dig in on a problem that you don't know how to solve, that's when you learn how to solve it.